What's up guys, just wanted to share this today. I'm working on this big mother. It's a big uh, EVAP cooler. 180 volts. On this thing, the size of this indoor fan is I could lay down across that opening and still fall through. on this big uh, 10 ton unit over there. Yay. All right guys, I got a, the uh, water supply lines cleaned up to where uh, all the pads are now getting saturated again. So uh, this place will be getting some good evaporative cooling. This fan is still huge, it's a six foot diameter. Huge, just sucking the butthole out of the frog. This side was completely dry, and now the pads are completely saturated. I'm gonna put some CLR in the tank, um, just so we can break up some of this calcium, and uh, eventually make it down the drain. Yep, so here's this one. I'll show you on the uh, other EVAP cooler right there that I gotta do, how I uh, clean these lines up. All right, so I got the old water pump out, and Here's my new one in here. Um, I have the water pump obviously disconnected under the ball valve. So what I'm gonna do, I think I got bit by something. Anyways, I have this big old bottle brush and I'm gonna shove through there. It goes to about right here at that point again, right by that screw. And I'm gonna clean that out real good. Do the same thing with this input tube. And there's another line that goes that way towards these pads here. That uh, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Like, Big old bottle brush or big bottle brush or mini chimney sweep. <laughs> so we just shove that. Right in there. So we feel it stop right there. And we just give it a good squish it out. Oh, all that shit comes out. Look at all that. Most of it just fell off right now. That's what's clogging this all up. Show you some of the crap that came out of the that house in. But also, you see these pads are completely dry. Not a lick of water on them. So hopefully by the time we get done repairing it, we have fully saturated pads. I gotta change the pump and the belt real quick and then I'll clean out the other lines. So one of our other texts is the ones that came out and uh, diagnosed these ones and I just got a phone and he said this pump wasn't working that's why he recommended the new pump for this unit. I got a feeling that one's okay. What I found is when I flip the 120 switch over here it pulls in this little contactor and it's supposed to actuate these two relays. The top relay works but this bottom one right here is no good. This one needs to be replaced. That's why the pump's not coming on. So I'm gonna have to get a new relay for this one but in the meantime, I'll just jump uh, the power wire for that pump up to uh, this relay because this relay um, actuates this external 120 plug. So that's not going to be used. So I'll just put the pump on this relay and then we'll just switch the, the uh, 120 outlet to this broken relay for right now. And then when we get the new relay, the uh, outlet will work off of this relay on the bottom instead of the top one. So that's what we're going to do right now. All right, so I got all that bullshit switched around, so uh, let's uh, see if our pump comes out. We'll call and turn the 120 on. And there's our pump. All right, so now we'll get to the pads and clean those tubes. I'll shut this up for right now. That way I don't fall into it by accident or something stupid like that. Now, this is our 480 disconnect right here. Turn that on, this everything comes on. Alright, we're getting one on that now. So to clean the drip plate and manifold water line, come to the other side of the unit, there's a little plug that goes here, a little rubber plug, and then inside of there, there's a bung. <laughs> there's a bung that we gotta take out of there and loosen that up. There's all kinds of freaky ass bugs on this unit. Anyway, so I'll come here with my little bung plug out. And it's all full of shit. Well, cleaner now. I got this out of there. I'm sure that inside the unit. There's the inside of the pipe. You can see how clogged that is. 
So I'm gonna blow that out with some water first and I'm gonna turn the pump on and let it let the water just kind of blow most of that shit out. I need the water to get through. I should be spraying out of there like a motherfucker. I might have to clean it first. No, the water's not even getting through. So let me out. This. Do that same process a couple more times. Look at all that shit. We're gonna bottle brush it a couple more times. We're gonna see much cleaner. We're gonna do the other side too. There's another manifold over there, that little black plug right there. So we're gonna do the same thing. All right, I got my tubes all clean. And you can see we're getting water flow through the pads now. Wait for this to get nice and wet before we turn the fan on. I want this to get nice and saturated. This is how I like to get my little neck wrap nice and cold and put it on the front side of the pads. <laughs> Here's that uh, air conditioning system that I'm looking at now and I'm willing to bet that we have a fan problem. So we're going to take this apart. Putting those heat up fans on. Well, it feels like it's running. I definitely wasn't wrong. We definitely have an airflow problem. Um, the belt's very loose. I can almost stop that with my hand. I'm not going to attempt it, but I mean, I could probably grab this here and stop it. But it needs a new belt, so I'm going to shut this down real quick. See what size the belt we need. Hopefully, I've got one on the truck. AX39. Let me go see if I've got one. All right, so back on this unit, um, I have the old belt here. It's not in bad shape really at all, um, and they don't want to replace it. They said, see what I can do with this belt. So what I'm doing is you can adjust the tension of the belt with either one of the pulleys. Uh, I'm just going to work on the motor pulley for now. But what you do is you loosen this little grub screw here with an Allen wrench. Just loosen that out and then you can turn this front pulley and counterclockwise opens up the gap makes the belt looser going clockwise tightens pulls the two plates together and that tightens the belt so I already tightened it and it made it too tight um, and how you determine if the belts too tight or too loose is you take the amp draw on three legs of power and make sure you're under the uh, recommended amp rating so I did that and the belt was a little bit too tight so I'm going to loosen it just a little bit and uh, see what that gets me and then do it again. Alright, I got it all up and running, got the pump adjusted correctly. Um, the motor's rated to 2.6 amps and I got it running right now at like 2.4. Um, I had to do kind of a mixture, I had to loosen the pulley but it was kind of like in between if I tightened it one way it was too much amperage, if I tightened it the other way the belt was too loose and it slipped. So what I did is I put it to the setting or to the pulley clockwise, so it was a little bit too tight for the amp, it was like 2.8, 2.9, and then um, I just loosened the motor mount bracket a little bit and just scooted it up like maybe not even an eighth of an inch really, I didn't move it that much, tightened it back down, 
starter is back up and put my amp pump on it and we're at uh, 2.4 amps. So I'm good with that. I'm going to leave it. Everything's tight. I'm going to put the panel back on and make sure that it's cooling good. And then uh, I'll check their, their fresh air intake and make sure that that's working right. There's a little damper in here. So we'll make sure that's working right. Alright, so I'm going to go the gauges on. I'm not going to record any more on this uh, building today. I got to get going, so don't have much time to fuck around. Let's see what it's going on.